Hi, I'm Tony Poulos and I'm here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Today I have with me Anders Vestergren, who is the VP, Head of Solution Area Network Management at Ericsson. Welcome, Anders, how are you? And also, Chris Wright, who is the Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of Global Engineering at Red Hat. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Gentlemen, the excitement is all around us here at Mobile World Congress, as it always is. But what are you hearing and what's top of mind as you look across 2024? Well, first of all, we're, we're back in full force. So the energy level, I think, is, is actually back to where it was you know, pre-COVID, which is exciting. It feels really good. Then there's always kind of some thematic topics that, that rise to the top. Undeniably, this is the year all conversations are about AI. Uh, so I'm sure we'll get into that at some point later in this conversation. Um, also, there's what, what are the ways that we can take what we're, we've been doing in 5G bring those commercially into, into the market. The rollouts are still progressing, um, but where do we turn that into monetization opportunities for, for, for businesses to connect maybe with enterprises and think about edge use cases, you know, smart infrastructure, smart cities. There's you know, things that we've talked about before, but they're getting uh, more real today. So I'd say we're transitioning from where we've been into more commercial rollouts and production environments, which is exciting. So. A lot of enthusiasm today. And do you agree with that, Anders? Yeah, I think that for me, it's of course natural a lot about 5G. Yes. And then it's a lot about this new deal in AT&T, an open programmable network, the first big. And being open and programmable means that you can start using AI on all different levels. That's the idea anyhow. And I think that is what we are discussing on how to enable. Well, while we're, on, while we're on the subject of 5G, uh, Anders, how are you seeing the progress of 5G across the industry? Where is the current focus? I really want to know about that. And where are we in the global deployment of 5G? Because we're a little bit slow in the global deployment. And of course, we must address how does AI play that role in 5G? That's yeah. a lot for you to answer. <laughs> I think I can, uh, I can at least try. I think the, the speed varies across the globe. Some uh, regions are very much ahead and some are not so much ahead. I think it's like we have deployed it in 158 operators today around across 67 countries, if I remember correctly. Yep. But only 30 of those is true 5G standalone. Yes. And I think that is where the focus is. So how do you get 5G standalone and how do you get the monetization and the value of 5G for real? And how do you get those differentiated services that you can actually charge for? And, and then I think coming back to how do you make this open and programmable so you can apply AI on all different levels to actually uh, both monetize it in a better way, but also op operationally make it much more efficient than today. But how feasible is that, Chris, to, well, with the AI role coming in? I, I think it's... There's a little bit of hype there, Let, let's, let's be real, um, but there's also some very uh, important reality that, that we're bringing in from an infrastructure point of view to support AI workloads. So if you think about uh, a big nationwide network, uh, there's the radio access part, there's the core, um, there's some definite interest in leveraging some of that infrastructure to actually support AI workloads very directly. Um, then there's also how can you use AI to help operations teams better operate the infrastructure? And then there's a different view on AI, which is uh, customer engagement. How are you working with customers? So, so many different ways in which it could be used. Some are already there. Think about chatbots, they already exist. Um, some are under development. How, how can you do root cause analysis uh, at, with AI as a productivity tool for operations teams? That's a, still a work in progress. And then how could you leverage that infrastructure to build, um, say, national infrastructure, supporting AI workloads, both training and inference? That's kind of a future view. Gentlemen, when we were here at Mobile World Congress last year, we heard all about work in developing. But this year, we have real experience, and you have real experience in designing, delivering, and managing 5G, 5G core rollouts for global telco providers. Now, I know that you are not able to release company names, but let's talk about the live deployments, the ones you just briefly mentioned, uh, and, and the ones you've already delivered, and some of the lessons that have been learned, and some of the successes that you've already measured. Mm -hmm. Anders, would you like to kick off? Yeah, I think this is a very exciting. As we said, we have 30 uh, customers live on 5G standalone. Yep. 
I think five of those are on, on Red Hat infrastructure and it, they are growing by the day. Yeah. Uh, I think what we have learned now, we have the technology in place, we have the architecture in place, we have the future-proof architecture in place. Now it's about how we use that in cloud operations and how we really reap the benefit from what we have done both from cloud operational point of view, but also the ability to add things like AI to, for intent-based networking and to add this open and programmable touch to it, uh, to it as well. Chris, from your side? Well, part of the maturation of the industry is just getting those, the, the real life experience. Um, that means when we work together as partners, we discover how we need to build a solution that's operationally accessible to the user base, right? The customers that are building these 5G networks need to be able to operate a, a core network with ease, with root cause analysis, and then also manage lifecycle upgrades. So it's not just a initial deployment. This is a long-lived infrastructure. Uh, that's one of the areas that, that we've learned a lot together. Uh, and then we're also looking at uh, how do we scale this? Because typically we start smaller build confidence and then scale. And some of that looks like um, scaling the infrastructure from our point of view. That's how do you manage all of the different uh, clusters of Kubernetes from an Ericsson point of view. That's how do we make sure we're managing all the applications that sit across that infrastructure. So, you know, a lot of learning and then we put that back into best practices, blueprints, reference designs as a way to help uh, the next uh, the next rollout go smoother and smoother. I, I agree on that. I think it's very important part of this collaboration, trying to reap the cloud benefits of what we have done when we scale it. Yes. Well, I want to delve, delve a little bit further into the collaboration side of the Red Hat Ericsson relationship, if I could. Um, we look forward to checking with you in the future on these things, but uh, you know, tell us more about the developments that you are doing jointly, because you both have so much experience separately. How do you bring it together? Well, I'd say, we have a very complementary view of the world. Our expertise is in this platform layer. We work on open source and Kubernetes and Linux and all these technologies that support the applications. Ericsson brings all of the application expertise and knowledge, uh, including under, deep understanding of the telco market space. So we collaborate in how do we build a solution together? And it it's really starts with our engineers. The way I like to think of it is, when you get engineers together, magic happens. And our engineers, you know, roll You're talking like a CTO now. Well, it's, it, it's <laughs> true. It, when, you get, when you get engineers together, um, we're not about the, the complications of uh, what does a commercial relationship look like. We're just solving technical problems. And uh, we put our engineers directly together and we try to share understanding. So we, we bring to Ericsson uh, a pre g 8 version of, of our platform so they can start doing validation before it ever gets uh, into commercial access. And they've helped us understand workloads that we can do better testing before we bring them a platform. So it's a very deep uh, engineering level relationship that produces a better outcome for the customer. I agree on this. Uh, and I think I'm very grateful for this collaboration. And I think now we have with an engineering approach, uh, we have managed to solve how we can put real teleco workloads onto a cloud infrastructure because it's not always trivial to do it across the core, OSS, BSS, yeah. and also cloud run, which are pretty unique and pretty hard requirements. Yes. And I'm really looking forward to taking it to the next step and really understand how you operate this and reap the full benefits of using cloud infrastructure. There's a lot of talk also about sustainability in the industry. How is your relationship going to help in sustainability and what will you be offering your customers? Well, well, we've started off doing work together to lower the power consumption of the radio access network. And if you look globally, the power footprint of networks is a meaningful percentage of all uh, power consumption. So we really need to help bring that power consumption down as we roll out into more dense network uh, provisioning with, with 5G. Also, the cost of power has gone up and then the concerns around climate change are, are so real for every region of the globe. So this is a really important topic. And when you add a combination of how an application uses a platform and how we can leverage key accelerators in hardware from the platform, we can really help reduce the power consumption. I agree on that. And I think that, I mean, this is a very important question for 
all our customers from different angles. And I think what we are seeing is we are working on with you on this, on but we are working on every level of the network to get the power consumption down to more efficient applications, better usage of the platform, uh, even AI at different layers, and AI even on top of it to have it truly programmable on a larger level on how to turn things off, make things sleep when they're not in use. Gentlemen, it's so great to talk to you. I'm going to catch up with you next year, I hope, to see what the results are of this relationship. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.